All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Biohazard Ball Python. It's a pretty rare combination of genes. I actually went over to the internet and I could only find three examples of the Biohazard. Two of them were over on Morph Market and one was over on the World of Ball Pythons. It's actually a five gene combination. It consists of the butter, the fire, the cinnamon, and the super pastel. And essentially what it is, it's actually a nuclear sterling. So the combination of the butter and the fire is called nuclear and the combination of the cinnamon and the super pastel is a sterling and kind of the interesting thing with this combination is both the nuclear and the sterling are extremely visually dominant meaning if you work other genes into those combinations a lot of times those combinations will completely overwhelm the visual appearance of other genes in that combination so today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you how to make a biohazard ball python and some of the challenges working other genes into the biohazard ball python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on the world of ball pythons, and I wanna start with this snake right here. This is a biohazard. I should say this is one version of the biohazard, and the biohazard can be pretty variable from one example to the other. If you actually look at this one, it has quite a bit of kind of this yellow color coming through, has quite a bit of pattern on the side, and look at all the pattern on the top of the snake, kind of outlined in this really dark, kind of an outline, which is pretty wild. And you can actually see this kind of has kind of the pale head from the super pastel kind of washing out that. So this is one version of the biohazard. And I want to show you this other one. Take a look at this. This is another biohazard, which is pretty amazing. At first glance, you're actually looking at the difference between these two and you're thinking, are those really the same genes? Did they actually identify them correctly? And what I want to do is I want to show you some of the underlying genes and how they come together to form the really big differences in the visual appearance between these two different versions of the biohazard. And the first one I want to show you is the nuclear. And this is what a nuclear looks like. The nuclear is the combination of the butter and the fire. And it's kind of interesting if you actually just look at the butter, which a lot of people think the butter is pretty much the same thing as the lesser. I actually had a comment under one of my videos and they're like, hey, is the butter clown the same thing as the lesser clown? and they're pretty much the same thing. I'm convinced that the butter and the lesser are slightly different versions of the same gene. I've actually seen some butters are a lot brighter than some of the lessers. Some lessers are actually a little bit darker than even the darkest butters, but there's definitely some overlap between the butters and the lessers. They're both in the blue-eyed leucistic and they both make completely white snakes when you add them to another gene in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So the nuclear, that's kind of interesting it's a pretty visually dominant combination between the butter and the fire and kind of to test the visual dominance what I like to actually like to do I like to add banana to some combinations to see if it'll allow the color of the banana to come through and to test the visual dominance so take a look at this this is the banana and when it comes to visual dominance meaning working other genes in with other genes to see which one you can really see in the combination the banana is is like the king of visual dominance. Really the only one that's even more visual dominant than the banana would be the albino. If you work any other gene into the albino, you pretty much end up with a yellow and white snake that completely masks the color of all the other genes in the albino. The banana is a little bit more forgiving. Sometimes the banana can, can actually let some other colors kind of shine through. Sometimes you'll actually find some combinations that will completely mask the banana, unlike you'll see with the albino. So here's what happens if you take the banana and you add it into the nuclear. Take a look at this. This is a really beautiful snake because it's a, it's a pretty interesting combination. This is a combination of the butter, the fire, and the banana. You can definitely see that the butter and the fire has really cut down on the amount of color that you see coming through from the banana, but it still allows a little bit of the color to actually come through. As a matter of fact, I actually did a video on the visual dominance of gene. It's kind of interesting to see which genes are, you know, more visually dominant than other ones when you combine them together. And sometimes you'll get two genes that aren't that visually dominant, but when you combine them, they can really increase the visual dominance to the top of the scale, which is pretty amazing. 
So here is the Sterling, and the Sterling is incredibly visually dominant, and it's also extremely variable from one example of the Sterling to the other. So the Sterling is the combination of the cinnamon and the super pastel, and kind of my favorite Sterlings, I'd say, are the ones that have a lot of pattern like this and that are like a silvery gray color. Really awesome combination between the cinnamon and the super pastel, and it really comes down to which version of cinnamon that you're using in your sterlings. I actually pulled up three different sterlings over here so you can see some extreme differences between the different versions of the sterling. So if you actually look at this one, it's kind of a silver color with a lot of pattern. And take a look at this sterling. This one is really wiped out. Look at all the pattern completely wiped out on the sterling. And actually you can see a little bit of a color coming in. Sometimes you can see a little bit of yellow coming in your sterling. Sometimes it'll completely wipe out the pattern and sometimes you'll have a lot of pattern. And take a look at this sterling. This is pretty amazing. You have a lot of pattern and you have a lot of color coming through. I think this is mainly from uh, your version of cinnamon that can bring a lot of color into a lot of your cinnamon combinations like the sterling. So take a look at this. This is actually the combination of the sterling and the banana. And look at how visually dominant the sterling is in this combination to completely overwhelm the banana. And it's kind of interesting on this one. It really wiped out pretty much all the pattern. And if you actually kind of keep this in mind, looking at the sterlings and the nuclear, and you go back to the different versions of the biohazard, you can definitely see the different versions are really from the different combinations of the different versions of the genes come together. It's pretty amazing how variable it can actually be. So I actually found a biohazard with the addition of Anchi. It was the only one that had the addition of one more gene into the biohazard. And this is what the Anchi looks like. The Anchi is pretty awesome. It actually reduces the, the, the pattern on the genes. It's actually a pattern reducing gene. And a lot of times if you have a lot of pattern in your combination, the Anchi will reduce the pattern. And a lot of times the Anchi will also bring out a lot of the yellow and oranges, depending on the version of Enchi that you use, the Enchis can be pretty variable too. So here's what happens if you take the Enchi and you work it into the biohazard. <laughs> take a look at this. Look at what the biohazard did to the Enchi. You almost can't even tell that the Enchi is even in the mix. It's pretty incredible. Because keep in mind, this is actually the, uh, the Sterling on top of the Nuclear, which both are really visually dominant. And then you try to work other genes into the combination and it can completely wipe them out, which is pretty amazing. If you actually compare this one to the other version of the biohazard without the Enchi, you can definitely tell on this one, the pattern's a little bit more reduced, maybe a little bit more color on the side. With a keen eye, if you're actually breeding these, you can definitely pick out the Enchi, but to the untrained eye, just looking at this, it's pretty amazing how much it really wipes out other genes working it into the biohazard. And kind of the interesting thing with this combination is uh, if you're kind of keeping up with the modern genetics some of the new stuff that's coming out I've heard a lot of breeders coming out saying that they're pretty sure it's pretty guaranteed now that the Enchi and the cinnamon is actually an allelic combination which is pretty interesting because up until the last couple years we didn't know that the Enchi and the cinnamon was allelic so if it's not an allelic combination if you actually had a cinnamon Enchi and you bred it to something else you would get normals you'd get Enchis you'd get cinnamons and you would get cinnamon anchies and if you actually have an allele combination with the cinnamon anchie you'll get 50% anchies 50% cinnamons you won't get any normals and you won't reproduce the Enchi cinnamon. And it seems like a lot of people that have combinations with the, the Enchi and the cinnamon, they're not seeing any normals and they're not seeing any Enchi cinnamons coming out of their offspring when they breed these Enchi cinnamons. So I thought it was kind of interesting. One of the new things that's just kind of coming on the scene in ball pythons that, that's just kind of being discovered. So take a look at this. I actually came over here to the, the ball python genetic wizard uh, over here, the genetic calculator over here on Morph Market. And if you can actually plug in different genes and different combinations to test, 
and see if you have an allelic combination. So take a look at this. You can actually have a cinnamon and chi, and you breed it to a normal, you'll get 50% cinnamons, 50% anchies. So this is kind of interesting. Take a look at this. I actually took this combination of the biohazard and chi, and I plugged it into the genetic calculator. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of times people have this kind of wrapped around their head thinking, all right, what I want to do is I want to have a ball python that contains super and allelic combinations because if I breed that to something else I won't get any normals but in some cases it can actually limit the the kind of the variety of the offspring that you get so take a look at this you actually have the Enchi cinnamon butter super pastel fire and if you actually take a closer look at this combination the Enchi biohazard what you actually have here is you have the super pastel so everything will come out with one copy of the pastel and then you'll have the combination of the cinnamon and the enchi so everything will come out either enchi or cinnamon so everything will be a two gene combination it'll be a pastel enchi or a pastel cinnamon so these are the results you'll get eight different results breeding your enchi biohazard to something else but it's, it's kind of interesting if you look at this it's, it's kind of pros and cons because if you look at this you're like all right i have everything at least two genes which is really powerful and no normals but i actually came over here and plugged in another six gene combination that wasn't allelic and that didn't have a super in it and if you actually plug it in and breathe that to a normal look at all the different combinations that you can actually get it's like a dizzying array of combinations for from all these different genes coming together. So it's pretty amazing when you have a, a, a snake that has a super and an allelic combination, you can get some pretty good results as far as getting at least two gene combinations, but you really don't get the variety that you would see if they were all just standalone genes. And if you actually kind of look at the odds of getting a normal out of this breeding, it's one in 64, which means if you had like a six egg clutch, it'd take you like 10 years to get a normal. So that's not really, you know even worth thinking about all right i'm going to use this combination because i don't want to get a normal <laughs> the odds are pretty slim that you'd actually get a normal but i thought it was pretty amazing the differences in the variety of the offspring that you get using the enchi biohazard compared to another six gene combination pretty amazing all right so it is time for the question of the day and michael ross asks do all head pines have tracks or markers? And that is a very good question. So keep in mind the pied is a recessive mutation where you need two copies of the gene for a visual. And the pied essentially what it does is it brings in big splotches of white all over the snake. And pretty much the definition of a recessive mutation is you can't see one copy of the gene in most cases. And I'd say pretty much the pied might be the only exception that I know of where sometimes you can actually see one copy of the gene. I'd say maybe one out of four het pides you can actually see just one copy of the gene and kind of the giveaway for het pides is a lot of times you like to see right on the belly of the ball python you'll see tracks on the belly it almost looks like someone took a sharpie marker and put marks on either side of the belly it usually comes up maybe about a third of the way up sometimes about a half of the way up the belly on the bottom of the belly and sometimes on the head pods you can actually see a little bit jumbled up pattern in certain kinds combinations a lot of times if you don't see the track sometimes you can see a little bit more of a jumbled up pattern that might hint that it can be a head pipe but it's not certain in a lot of combinations and I'd say pretty much the only time you'd really see the head pied markers pretty much 99% of the time is if you have a normal ball python with no other genes in the mix so if you actually have multi-gene head pieds I can almost guarantee probably 99% of the time you're not going to see the markers on the belly of the snake. The only one that I've actually seen pretty reliably where you have a gene in with the head pied where you can see the tracks is pastel. Sometimes the pastel head pieds, you can actually see tracks on the belly of the snake. So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky trying to figure out if you have head pieds. As a matter of fact, I actually produced some coral glows this year. I held one coral glow back because it was like 50% head pied and the pattern 
iron was a little bit jumbled up compared to my other coral glows. And with the coral glow, the, you can't see any of the tracks on the bottom of the coral glow because it completely wipes out all the belly pattern with the coral glow gene. But sometimes you can actually see a little bit jumbled up of a pattern in the coral glows. I'm thinking it might be the head pods. Uh, it kind of it kind of takes a lot of guesswork, but I'd say in most cases, if you actually have a normal ball python with really strong tracks, lines along either side of the belly, the head pied markers, I can almost guarantee that those are definitely head pines. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.